Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, at least here in Europe. I don't know in which part of the world you are watching right now and which time it is, but nevertheless, a very warm welcome uh, from me and my guest. Today I am connected with Steve Allison in California, and we want to talk about the new spatial sound system SpaceMap Go from Myasound. But first, let's introduce Steve. Hello, Steve. Hi, hey, Marcus. How are you? Fine. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, let's start right away. SpaceMap Go was introduced and is, has gone through the press uh, some days ago. What exactly do we have to imagine under SpaceMap Go? Uh, well, thank you. Um, I'm going to share my screen and uh, have some graphics here. Stand by. All right. So SpaceMap Go is a uh, spatial audio mixing tool that is uh, built around the Myerstown Galaxy audio processor uh, product. So the Galaxy is a uh, scalable um, signal processor that um, comes in two main flavors, one with eight uh, physical inputs and 16 uh, physical outputs that are, and another that has a four in and eight out version. And in the heart of each of these uh, modules is a matrix. And so space map go, traditionally when controlling the matrix, you're setting values for the input to the output. Well, spatial audio and spatial sound control um, at the heart of all of these algorithms, whether it's uh, VBAP or DBAP, ambisonics, uh, those are matrix audio controllers and they are changing the matrix. So space map is a technique for, uh, it's an algorithm for taking, uh, for changing the matrix that has some very special uh, capabilities and uh, space map go is a, is an application for the iPad, which I'll show you later that lets you um, touch and move sound um, using one or more iPads. So we uh, can then connect the Galaxy processors to a, to a network, a control network, and then use the uh, iPad, one or more of them, to control, control the matrix over the network, rather than traditionally where you might you know, change the, the matrix like we see on the left, um, that's what you're used to seeing if you're if you've used uh, the Galaxy processor with Compass software. Uh, now with Space Map Go, we give you another way of controlling the matrix. And so if you um, click in the on the on the areas on the right, each of those um, eight areas in the mix view of Space Map Go are representing a row of the matrix. And what's really great about Space Map Go is that it it lets you configure a matrix uh, to a very large size um, with up to 32 inputs, which can be a combination of uh, physical inputs, whether that's uh, analog or AES audio or Milan AVB inputs, which are a uh, protocol um, that's based on ethernet. And um, so you could, with those 32 inputs, you can then mix them to all of the outputs that your Galaxy processors provide. And we've done tests up to 16 of them. So that's uh, you know, a large number, 250, up to 256 outputs. But the typical use we've, we see will be you know, one to three. So a small, small venue um, maybe has eight, out, eight outputs in the surround system or 16. Um, when we've done our trade show demos, we typically use two main galaxies and then maybe a, a sidecar galaxy is just doing array processing. So that's a that's a quick overview as to what Space Map Go is all about. Okay, thank you very much so far. Um, Space Map Go has a quite long history. I read a press release about about, uh, about 2005 uh, when Milestone acquired LCS, who was the original inventor of, of Space Map. And already in 2005, the name Space Map uh, was mentioned in, in, in this text. So you, you've been working on this project for uh, oh, well, for, for a very long time now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here is, I found this when I was moving not too long ago. This was in, a, in a, an old box, but 
this is an advertisement, the, the first ever LCS ad, full page ad we did, which for a small company back in 1993, this was a big deal. Um, back when print advertising was a really, really big thing. Um, this is an ad in, in Mix Magazine, which said, you know, gain control, complete control of every sound on the map. Um, we had just, uh, this was 1993, probably maybe it was 94 by the time this came out, because it was in the autumn of 1993 that, or late 1993, that Cirque du Soleil's show Mystere opened in Las Vegas. And that was still up and running um, up until the time of the uh, unfortunate pandemic that we were all experiencing. Um, so that show is closed for now. Um, but yeah, it goes all the way back to 1993 for the first commercial installation. But if, you, if I may, I, I give you just a, a bit of a history as to where where Space Map came from. And yeah. then we can look at applications and how to use it. And I'll, I'll do a little bit of a demo. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I, I'm still seeing. Yeah, now we have the new picture. And at this point, right. uh, I would like to address for a second to, to the users, to the viewers right now if you have any questions to me or steve just uh, don't hesitate to write them in the in the live chat option on youtube and viewers on facebook i put a link to youtube uh in underneath the text please be so kind switch to youtube so that i only have to look over one live chat situation okay thanks steve back to you now sure thing um oh and also just to mention about uh, space map go is that it's really it's designed to integrate with with all sorts of workflows whether it's a live mix workflow or uh, installation at a at a museum um, with supporting pro protocols like uh, OSC and RTT RPM, which is what's what Black Tracks uses for its tracking protocol. Um, and uh, so that's that's a that's a big part of the of the product. So this began for me back in the mid 80s um, when I had the opportunity to spend some time in Australia. I uh, was in Canberra, 1986, and I um, this is a shot from, from Sydney, and I found a group that was working as building a portable performance space using a geodesic dome. And um, in this geodesic dome were 16 loudspeakers. So you can kind of see this here, um, the, the little old picture is a little fuzzy, but um, Right at ear level, there are five speakers and the audience was seating in the round and there were five video screens, which also conveniently had some sound absorption material behind them. So there are five screens, um, there are 16 loudspeakers. So it's three groups of five. So five, five, five here, and then one at the top, plus a couple of subs. And um, one of the challenges there was how do we do this? How do we mix sound? This was 1986, so this was even before MIDI-based VCA matrices were available. Those started showing up in the late 80s. Um, companies like um, JL Cooper, um, Steinberg, those companies, if you if you think back to that time. But so what we did was this: here we were in the dome. Um, here I here am I with a bit more hair and. Um, a larger computer that did that was uh, far less powerful than the one I'm using right now for this presentation, or even my watch, right? My watch has a lot more power than that computer. So this was a this was a 512k Mac. Um, it was a, when I bought it in 1984. It was a it was the original Mac, 128k RAM of memory was 68,000. It was upgraded to be a, the fat Mac with 512k of RAM, and there's some Amigas there as well. And um, it was David Worrell who started this adventure. Um, and uh, anyhow, so we had these. And what we did was we, uh, as a way of, of doing moving sounds, so we, we were developing a computer music language, which I helped write. And we used this language Forth and, and Mac Forth. This was before Mac's MSP, Super Collider, and all that. So we're using Forth and sending MIDI from the Mac to a pair of, these are Yamaha TX-816s. Each of those was a rack mount eight voice, well, multi-voice, but eight uh, output uh, synthesizer. So two of the, these gave us 16 channels of synth and we patched one synth to each of these loudspeakers. And then to give the appearance of moving, how do we how do, we do that? So, um, well, at the time, the prevailing um, technique um, 
which was uh, espoused by people like John Chowning, um, who is the inventor of FM as well, was to use distance. And later on, recently, this has kind of re-emerged as DBAP, distance-based amplitude panning, where you t basically look at the distance from your sound source to the loudspeaker. And as you move away from that speaker, you attenuate it. Uh, so, however, um, interestingly enough, that for that computer, that had a bit more math than I wanted to do. It used a square root, very inefficient uh, or difficult for this processor at the time. And this didn't have floating points. So um, came up with a different way of doing the, doing the uh, sound distribution. And this is where space map came from. So look at, if you think of this as a top-down view of the dome, here's the overhead speaker. These five channels 13 and uh, 12 through 16 are that ear level. And then we have this level here, eight, nine, 10, 11, seven, and one over the top and so forth. Um, organizing these into groups of three, so it's a piecewise triangular panner. This is the first space map that you're looking at. So um, let's say we have sound and we want to move it um, overhead. Well, it's going to go to that one speaker. Now, if I move it down uh, up this map here, if I'm in the middle of this uh, triangular area, which we refer to as a triset, then sound is distributed equally between these three speakers. And as I get closer to this one, let's say I put, put the cursor here, then this would have more sound to channel two and less to channels one and three. So that was the very basis. This was the first um, space map and that was in 1986. Um, LCS started in 1992, a company that I um, co-founded uh, with Jonathan Deans and others and um, there's a sound designer who wanted to kind of take sound design to the next level. And there, at the time, there was no, what I would say is a WYSIWYG tool for audio control for live theater. Um, there, there wasn't something that was really easy to use. So uh, we developed that. And um, the first show was uh, our, an arena tour of Japan called uh, George Lucas Super Live Adventure. And behind that was the matrix. And so over the years, this technique, um, this technology for theatrical matrix control, sound effect, triggering, et cetera, evolved with a series of products that LCS um, uh, developed and then Meyer acquired, as you mentioned in 2005. Um, so space map is a little different from other techniques. Um, Many other techniques, basically you, you give the X, Y, Z position of a loudspeaker and you just say, okay, algorithm, do it. You know, I, I, this is a little different. Space map is a bit different in that you are in control of the algorithm and you can contort it in a way that's, um, I, a good way to think about it is like origami. So if you have origami, you can create a shape, which is from a flat piece of paper, but as you fold it, you get something different. It's similar to, space map you're in a sense folding sound or folding your your canvas and so the this canvas that has these nodes so i showed you these are speaker nodes one two three so let's say this is a venue like a small theater that has a left a center and a right channel um for uh, a couple of overheads channels 21 and 22 and then some surrounds so this is an actual this is a venue in pasadena california um, the theater at boston court which is one of our um, early adopters um, and uh, demo sites actually. So, so with this space map, if, as I move it around, move sound around, it moves very smoothly. Now in the center, we've introduced a new element. This is a virtual node. The virtual node is where there's a speaker that um, in this case, I've made it a power preserved combination of these four outputs. And now as I move amongst these channels, it, it distributes amongst these four speakers. So if I'm right here at the, in the center, then it's going to these outputs. So I've introduced this. Also, I've, this has two silent nodes. They're, they're, over, they're unfilled in this graphic. So as I move to these, it phased basically a null loudspeaker. So these concepts, they're very simple. Um, you can build something more complex, for instance, Let's say that rather than having this very discrete panning, 
you just wanted to have, say, a five pole pinner. Um, that's what we've done here on the right. So what I've done is create these virtual nodes that each sends signal to three different loudspeakers and a center overhead that sends to these channels 21, 22. So now this, this map here is more as a broader, as if you had a, a five pole you know, quad panner where in the center it goes overhead. Um, so space map and space map go lets you quickly create space maps for, for the, even for the same configuration, different ways that you want to approach it. And I'll show you very soon how to do that. Um, but it also includes some pre-built um, space maps. So as the company, you know, developed and the technology developed through the 90s and the aughts and even the teens. Um, the, uh, Cirque du Soleil was a big, uh, one of the, uh, one of our customers. Other customers included art installations, um, orchestras for reinforcement of spatial sound with orchestra pieces, uh, live theater um, around the world was a, certainly a big big aspect of this um, productions all around the world that use space maps. So these are, these use space map in, in different circ shows. Um, so to give you a peek, peek behind the curtain, I'm just going to show you, for instance, the, the sound designer, Leon Rothenberg, who is working uh, associate for this project, who is working with sound designer, Jonathan Deans on Ka. This was a spectacle show. This was one of the largest scaled big budget tech productions ever uh, mounted uh, in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, certainly one of Cirque's big tech productions. It's really something. Um, they, I'm not gonna go through every one of these in detail, but basically space maps were created um, that provided different ways of controlling sound. So here, this is very untraditional. This is using a space map to actually pan up and down sections of the line array. So you'd get, you can, what they did for this would they would pan a sound like a guitar up and down the line array while simultaneously mixing it to other loudspeakers. So you get this, this combination of the effect of moving sound up and down elements of a line array. And in the surrounds, it's just something that uh, they just thought sounded great. And it was it was is very unique. It provided a different sort of modulation, spatial modulation. Um, so so they created all these different space maps. Um, question you might ask is live, <laughs> where you know so it's a theatrical tool. I'll I'll just I'll just segue. Um, and traditionally, space map has been a a tool used for live theater, and productions that are produced, automated, and then pretty much run um, the same way every time. And what we saw as a company is that we wanted to provide the um, ability to use these tools, use space map in, with live sound, because we saw the potential for this. Um, and certainly, uh, I don't, uh, not, theater is live sound. So this would be used in live sound, but it's say live touring or um, festival audio, you know, bands that are setting up and running, doing spatial. How do you do something quickly um, when you don't have a extended production period? So that's, that's what we got into. Uh, and we had this opportunity to uh, explore, um, to work with Moogfest which was a long running kind of music arts and technology festival in North Carolina, um, basically in, in elevating the memory of Bob Moog, uh, technologist, uh, inventor of the Moog synth and other inventions, including one of the, you know, the earliest multi-touch um, keyboards. Uh, he, he was behind that tech as well. So um, we, uh, worked with Moogfest and also Virginia Tech um, in Virginia came with us to North Carolina and we built a system for this. So we had the, uh, we had to create a system for this room that would support um, on the order of 18 bands over a few nights 
a uh, few of which we had an opportunity to work with ahead of time, like Suzanne Chani, uh, Mouse on Mars, the German duo, uh, electronic music duo, and others. And so this was the venue. It was an armory. And what we set up in here was a system with, um, this is our totem mount um, we did in 2018. And there was a screen and um, we had a left-right arrays that you can see there. Those are leopard arrays. And then we had surround positions, which are these uh, UPJs uh, at the balcony level. So it was a really great room for, uh, for setting up a system like this. And here's some of the, the artists that we, that we worked with ahead of time. So it was a combination of uh, having a dialogue with a, with a front of house mixer and the artists themselves about the intentionality of what you're going to do with spatial sound. It's just like any other mixing endeavor, you know, it's a partnership between the front of house engineer and the band. And this was the same thing. Um, so, you know, here's the track list from Mouse on Mars. Now, in addition to all these channels, which we help them and mix live with uh, kind of a prototype of Space Map Go, but in addition, they had tracks running from Logic that were spatialized. So. Um, so this was the setup at in 2018, and the whole goal here was to create a multi-touch uh, spatial audio console. And so to do this, we chose uh, iPad as the found foundational piece, and we used um, software called uh, Lemur software. Lemur was de originally developed uh, multi-touch uh, hardware that. Um, talk OSC and this was some years ago and this predated the iPad and um, when this came out we were thrilled because it was the first multi-touch surface that could be used as a controller uh, I know DJs really picked up on lemur or lemur and uh, it was uh, so it was Ethernet OSC and um, they then basically built a software app for iPad based on, on that same software, which was great. So this was 2018. We had three together. Um, one of, this was a student from Berkeley School of Music who did the mixing for this particular set, which was by um, Suzanne Chani, and it was a, a quartet. There was, we had quad stage monitoring, um, and it was, real, it was a real thrill. Um, so this, this showed us that it was possible and that in fact it was fun and uh, you could get a really great result with it. Um, and so 2019, um, we took it to, uh, I'm gonna go back to that, took it to another level, we evolved it a bit. We went to eight channels instead of six. We started working with an overview concept. And um, so then here's a, you know, it's a little bit of a track of, you know, uh, it's Martin Carrillo mixing a band. I forget which which artist this was, but you know, and he was just using one. So you know, you don't have to have three iPads to make this work. He was just using one and switching between pages. So, and what's great about this is since it is an iPad, you know, you can of course be wired with Ethernet with uh, an adapter, like I have here somewhere. Um, but you can also uh, go wireless and you can walk around. So um, so that's a bit about the history behind it and kind of what the product is. And uh, Marcus, maybe I just uh, jump in with a bit of a demo and just do you have any, any follow-up questions at this point before we move on? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much so far for this very detailed uh, information. And of course we can uh, get some uh, demo about on, on the working surface uh, before we go into some questions from our viewers, hopefully. All right, great. So I'm going to uh, switch out of uh, Keynote and uh, pull up. This is always the hardest part of this is grabbing the, the edge of this. Come on. I'll get it. Yes, maybe I can use the chance to repeat my, uh, my appeal to to viewers, if you have any questions concerning SpaceMap Go to Steve, don't hesitate to uh, ask in the live chat at any time. We will have some uh, 
demo now about the surface on the iPad and how to use uh, Space Map Go, and then we will start answering any questions. And now I see the the surface is ready. See the screen. So it's right. your turn again, Steve. Thank you. So um, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'm going to give you a quick uh, overview of the screen here and the surface, and then I'll I'll, I'll take you through a couple of quick demos. Um, so this is the main screen. Um, uh, at the bottom of, of the of the iPad, there are buttons for navigation, and um, these are the various views. And um, so the mixed view is the I could say it's the mixed view. It and provides eight pages at a time. And the reason why we did this is that this provides kind of detail some detailed control, level, mute, solo, um, position in the space map. Uh, the selection of what space map to use is also here because um, unlike other systems, you can configure the spatial algorithm or the space map per channel. So you might on one effect like a reverb want to have a very diffuse space map. Whereas on another channel like a lead vocal or a guitar, you want it to be a very discrete, you know, panner. So, um, I will talk about this particular space map that I'm using here uh, in a second, but going through the quick overview first, we see banks of eight channels. And then we can also go to this um, overview where we can see um, basically all of the channels at once. I'm using a second iPad here and uh, triggering um, some presets. So if I, you'll see these move with transition and we'll get into that a bit. So it's a, uh, What's nice about having multiple iPads, I actually have three sitting here, one in front, uh, I have a mini. The mini has become my favorite because it's so lightweight and it's fast. And it's, uh, so I, I love the mini. Um, I also have, you know, the Pro is great for uh, building a live console because it gives you more screen real estate and gives you more resolution for if you're mixing. So that's what we use live. And then the kind of vanilla, you know, vanilla middle, area of that is the is here this is an ipad air um so as long as they use the, the ipad os 13 or 14 you'll be good to go with your ipad um so so there's the the mix view uh the channel view which gives you details on a channel so for instance um i'm on channel one here um i could select a trajectory um and this um m we used at moog fest it was m for moog fest and conveniently Meyer sound. So, so this has been a trajectory used for quite a while. So I can, this is now applied to channel one. If I press play, uh, there goes the sound. Now I can, um, I can do this. There are knobs here. I can speed it up or slow it down. Um, now I can also click on the trajectory button there. And now I'm using use my two fingers. I can then twist it and move it. And so I can take something here and basically make it kind of shoot across the screen from the left corner and I can speed it up. So go forth. And all these uh, actions I'm doing, if I like this state, I can just say, okay, this is really cool. I'm gonna say it, call it uh, twisted, twisted M and uh, I can give it a weight and a transition time. In this case, I'll say, no, I just want you to do it immediately. Um, and then um, it's on channel one. It's gonna put it in the pulses group. So there I have, I've, I've created a snapshot for that channel. And if I, if, for instance, if I go now back to this channel and touch it here and maybe set it, you know, to a different space map, now say something else, just pick this for one. Now if I, from the uh, set list, there's our automation. Here's my twisted M, if I recall this, then there it goes. And it's also um, provides us, you were provided with the ability to pair channels. So it could deal with either mo uh, single channel or or stereo content. In this case, I've mirrored these two so that if I, if I 
select channel one, it's mirroring on the X axis, but I can also mirror these uh, um, X, Y is kind of fun because it just, it's, it changed, it's the second channel goes to the opposite quadrant. So, um, or I can say they're not linked and they're independent and I could start this one and then I could do that. So, so there's the channel view. Um, and then if I move forward, there's a, which I showed you briefly, this is the snapshot view, um, the set list view. And so what we've done is create, wanted to make an automation system that's fast. And um, so the, the concept that we have is kind of, is there are three types of snapshots. Now, if you're, if you're familiar with this, or if you're not, um, the Galaxy processor provides, uh, is, it was born out of the need to calibrate a multi-channel sound system or PA and to make multiple loudspeakers work as a single unified system. And that's done by properly tuning the system and calibrating that system. Now there is both objective calibration um, to bring you to a blank canvas, things like adding delay um, to side fill loudspeakers to delay to the mains, for instance, or um, output EQ to deal with boundary loading for the installation of that loudspeaker. That's, tip that's typically on the output. Um, and then in addition, and that's signal processing and Galaxy provides you with lots of EQs and delay uh, for the outputs. And then on the input side, there's also processing um, more typically for the you know, art EQ. Like you're, con you're just, you want to take your main mix and you want to you know, warm it or something. So you maybe do this on the input side to your stereo feeds, but you have your nice calibrated output. So, you know, Galaxy, when you're using space map in Galaxy to do spatial audio mixing, you still have all of that functionality in the Galaxy processor. You still have the calibration EQ, you still have your art EQ on the inputs, for instance. And um, so that you, once you're used, you can use Compass Go on the iPad to do that. And then you can store this with um, system snapshots. So. Um, if I wanted to, if I change the EQ, I could create a new um, system snapshot, which has, and the system snapshot has all your system processing. So that's, that's kind of the, the EQ delay side of things. Now in the mix for the matrix, that's where space map go is, is comes in. And um, so the mix snapshot um, is a snapshot of all of the, of all of the 32 channels that we see here. And um, then the channel snapshot is within that, it's a, a subset. So think of it this way. Let's say if you're doing a, um, a set with a band. So each mix snapshot could be a song. And then within that song, there's a guitar solo and maybe they're, you know, an improvisatory band, um, a jam band or it's, you know, they're not playing to a click, you know, or they're, they're just improvising and you want to have some moves and you say, oh, well, when they does this thing, I want to pull up a circle. Well, oh yeah, I hear this. I want to do twisted M. So you, so you start twisted M going. Um, that's what this channel snapshots are for. And those can have really any number of channels, one, two, three, four. So um, the idea is to keep this really easy and fast for automation. All of these controls all these snapshots have an external recall ID, and um, that external recall ID can be triggered from QLab or Ableton or Max MSP or wherever, whatever product or software that can send an OSC message. So um, this can sit there, and once you program it, you can have it all uh, done for you. So. I'm going to do create last and then settings. Basically, this is where you can check out how's your system going. In this, my case, I just have a simple system. It's a Galaxy 408. So, um, uh, and here are the inputs. I have right now. I'm not connected to my AVB system, so it's um, so it's red. But basically, it's configured for four channels of physical inputs, which in this case are AES three. And then there are 28 channels of um, AVB. 
and then there, in this case, there are eight outputs. The Galaxy 408, 408 actually has 16 um, logical outputs or signal processing outputs. Just eight of them are associated with a um, with physical outputs. And there are ways to turn on mappings for OSC. Oscar is a, is uh, is what's used for integration uh, integration with um, uh, desktop uh, audio workstations. So Oscar is a is developed by Earcom in France. Um, it's a it's a plugin that lets you use Space Map Go with the touch, and you can then move and record movements in a channel, in an automation channel in Logic or Pro Tools or Reaper, et cetera, um, or Live, Ableton Live or Performer. And when you touch the screen, the touch goes from the iPad to the Galaxy. The Galaxy sends the message on to the Oscar plugin and it punches in. So it lets you very easily automate and capture your dynamic moves in your audio workstation so that if you then move your audio around, the automation will track. So that's what that's for. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can have multiple AVB, redundant AVB streams. And uh, then there are some, some app settings as well. But the fun begins, uh, part of the fun is, uh, is in the create view. So it's going to show you a very simple space map. So this is a uh, space map with four channels. Um, and and the, the app, when you install it, it's free. Um, we'll show you a link later. You can download the app from the uh, App Store. You can get Compass uh, currently shipping 4.8.2 um, any day now. Um, 4.8.3 will be available. And um, and in fact, um, Space Map Go 1.0.1 .1 is coming out. That's what I'm using here is 1.0.1, .1, just as, as a few um, fixes from the initial release. Uh, you can you can run this offline, so you can play with this without having physical hardware. So you basically start up Compass, start up a virtual Galaxy system, and you can control it with Space Map Go. So here we have four loudspeakers. We can go to this test mode, and you can see that if I'm in the center, um, then uh, it's just it's going to the four speakers pretty evenly. This channel, this green one at the top here, this is a um, a derived node, so it's like a it's a Y. Think of it like a Y cable or a summer from the those four loudspeakers on the on the edges are going to that channel. So as I move around, we can see, right, this very simple area on channel one, and it's going to this, this is a subwoofer. Um, so, and if I go to a couple others, um, let's go to something that you might recognize. So here's a, um, here's a uh, 5.1. So we have, um, three in the front, two in the rear, a virtual center, and a sub. So it's five channels. Um, here's another way to look at a 5.1. So this is also a 5.1, but in this case, as we move to the edge, it fades out. And in this case, we've decided to not pan through the center channel. We've decided to make the center channel exclusive. So here I'm panning left and right, between the left and right, and as I move it towards this, we're getting it into the center channel. So that's just an artistic decision. I don't want center channel panning when I'm going between left and right in this case. But in this other one, which is the one I just showed you, yeah, and if I test this, you'll see this has center panning. So this is a very it's a simple example, but it shows you that you as the designer are in control of the space map and what you can do with it. So, um, and this this abstraction is really one of the real beauties of space map is that yes, you can make a space map with loudspeakers having positions on the canvas that represent, you know, closely the relationship they have in real space. You can do that. That's where we started. But what we found. And it wasn't really, it wasn't just us. It was, it was 
sound designers like Leon uh, Rothenberg, who then started, and Jonathan Deans, who thought of wacky things to do that were were a little abstract. And so, the one, the space map that I'm using here, and here's a here's a here's a, a group of them. I'm going to just jump right ahead to this one that I'm using here. Um, so, um, this space map has has a couple of interesting qualities. So, what we've been ex what I've been experimenting with here is a system with um, essentially five in the front, and then I have two rears, and I have a sub. So it's eight channels, but it's not a traditional 7.1 layout. It's a more of a frontal. And this kind of layout is something I think, we think is going to really catch on. It's for live sound. It's uh, quicker to deploy because you're deploying loudspeakers on the stage that you have access to and maybe a couple of surround positions. And so this one I've done as an example has a couple of extra surrounds. But um, in my case, what you'll see here is that, all right, so I do have, all right, if I just go right here to this channel, um, this is an HD1, which is a full range reference monitor that Myra Sound has made for many, uh, many years. The center channel is an MM4, which is a small um, installation loudspeaker. And then here's another HD1, and here's another MM4. So I have MM4, HD1, MM4, HD1, MM4. And I have a sub, which is an MM10. You know, I'm just in a small space. And everything's level attenuated and cued, and et cetera, et cetera. They sound great together. Then what I have is a, in the back, in about this position, I have a UPM. Um, and here I have another one that's labeled wrong, but you'll have to trust me on this. Or it's okay. um, so there's a UPM. Now this one here, it's an output on the space map, but it's going to the same channel. So you notice as I pan between this, channels UPM left is staying the same. So this space map that you see here ships with Space Map Go. It's a very handy, interesting space map to work with. Um, similarly, this is the MM4 right, and this is the MM4 right. And I just I just patched them to the same output in the in this create view. So so now as I move it around, here I'm just doing surround panning. All right, so you see this. And now I'm panning across the front. Now what's happening behind here? Now this is where it gets a little interesting, is this gives you a way to do frontal mixing and surround mixing with a single surface. So as I, if I go right on top of here, you'll see that this orange circle is a virtual node. It's sending signals to those three channels. And then this is sending to these two channels this is saying to these two, as is this. So basically, if I move along this axis, you'll see that I'm always having a minimum of two channels. And here I have a minimum of one channel as I move right along the axis. So as I, and now if I look at this one, this is three, three, and three, and now in this corner, this is going to these three and this is going to these three. So, so basically this gives me a surface where I can change the frontal density and frontal spread here, and then I can move it back here. So that's a quick, uh, just a quick overview about space maps. So within this window, I'm not gonna get into it now, you can play with this on your own. You can create your own space maps. You can select new ones and so forth. Um, and part of where I'm, where I've been having fun with this is uh, uh, working with a sound artist um, and uh, musician Eric Hall, um, who's came out with an album, "Music for 18 Musicians," and it's a piece I first heard live. It's by Steve Reich, and um, it. Um, lets me basic i have tracks from these channels uh, of audio it's a multi-channel piece with traditionally 18 musicians performing 20 plus 
percussion, well, it's an ensemble piece written in the mid 70s. Um, and I'm playing back stems of a new version of this in Logic. And then what I what I've able to do is, let's say these are all channels in the mix. Okay, so now everything is spread out. If I do this, if I go to this all front center, I can take all the channels and move them to just a couple loudspeakers. And then I can move them um, to this position. And now they're like all spread around me. And then I can select again and they they move. So this was all done very quickly with uh, automation and transitions. Um, so that is a, that's a quick, um, just a quick overview of of the app and um, you know I know we have time here to be considerate of I'm trying to move this okay yeah thank you very much so far Steve sure. for, for for the introduction um what what I would like to ask is now where does the the console the non digital console that you normally expect expect at a front of house uh, where does th this one come into the game? Do I do I need any one still? Um, well, that's a good question. So, um, I would say that our what we believe is going to be the the main um, the main installation technique for for Space Map Go will be somewhat similar to Moogfest, where there is a a physical console, and then groups being mixed on the console, and then sent to Space Map Go for the spatial mix. And yes, we are working on plugins to allow some of the spatial control that you're doing on the iPad to do from the console. But I will say that there is a, there is a, there's, this is a very interesting um, installation that I think you will see more of. Um, this is a show called Birds in the Moon. Um, the composer is Mark Gray and it is in production. I've seen the production environment and what they have is a string it's a it'll be a touring show it's an opera so it has a, a string quartet with backing tracks that are electronic sounding um, soundscape of music and there's a singer and an actor so there's six inputs and what they're doing is they have four mics on the string quartet and they have a mic on the actor a mic on the singer travels in a truck and those go to mic pre and they're going taking this straight into the galaxy. So in this case, they're using space map go as the mixer. It will ultimately be mostly automated, but even in the production environment, they're using space map go as the mixer. So there, there will be some cases where console, you don't need a console for a small system or a DJ set. Do you really need a console in front of that? Maybe not. Um, so, uh, but I think that the the lion's share of installations will be a kind of a sidecar console to do what it does well, and then you have Space Map Go running to do what it does well. And we we showed a I showed you pictures earlier with three iPads, kind of a standalone. But the other thing we, you can do is you can take a you can take something like this iPad and get a, buy a mount for it and clamp it to the side of the console. So it becomes kind of a physical sidecar. So you're mixing, you have your physical faders, you have your spatial automation right there. And we did that for a trade show in Amsterdam, ISC earlier this year, and that worked out worked out really well. Yeah, and who knows if digital, digital consoles are not the next thing to be replaced by uh, more modern technologies like iPads, maybe. <laughs> sure, so, maybe. Um, you can switch back to your picture now if you want. Other, sure. Uh, if I did not forget anything you wanted to show yeah. us, yeah, yeah, I do. I've a uh, let's see. I just wanted to show um, this a couple of installations. Um, we did work with uh, uh, Leon. You know, there's the whole development process for this has been you could say decades, but really, Moogfest is when we first said, look, we want to do a live spatial audio uh, mixing tool. And we want to make it fast. We want to make it easy to use. We want to make it sound great. So the first time it went out uh, on a show was um, Leon Rothenberg, who's a sound designer based in California in, this lo in Los Angeles. 
And he used it on this off-Broadway production of Dracula earlier this year, January, February, um, and uh, controlled with QLab, so that worked out well. And then um, Bill Fontana, who's a sound artist, um, had a installation. Um, he collaborated with uh, someone else on the visuals, but he um, did the audio installation. It was multi-channel in, in Graz, um, this called Primal Energies. And this uh, shows you on the left was the layout. Each of those squares is where a loudspeaker is. Uh, Meyer Sound UPM 1P is installed. There are also some subs. And on the right, um, this showed a space map. So in this case, he created a space map that was a f like a fairly um, re very representational space map. So I'd say, you know, there are different types of space maps. You could say there's an abstract and there's a representational. So this is a representational map. And uh, in this case, AVB audio streamed from a Mac straight into the galaxy. There was no console. Um, in, in Leon's case, there was a console and they came in analog. So, so you do have this kind of flexibility of how you, how you integrate it both in signal flow, but also in the control environment. You can, you can go in a number of different ways. Okay, yeah, indeed also very interesting projects. Um, yes. And when you started back in the 80s, 90s with the development of such spatial projects, Would you have thought that by the year 2020 you, you have so much uh, possibilities by the tremendous increase of, of computer power? You know, that's a good question. I'd say, you know, we dreamed, we did, we dreamed of it. Um, in 1996, uh, this was, you know, once again, Jonathan Dean's pushing the envelope. Um, It was in 95 or 96, he did a show, uh, it was a revival of Damn Yankees on Broadway. And in that show, which was mixed by and operated by the, the late, great Mark Dennis, uh, we inst uh, they installed a touchscreen interface to a Mac. I don't know was which Mac it was, but there was a one-off, right? So we tried and it kind of sort of work but basically they automated it and they didn't use it live but we dreamed we always thought having this touch interface would be great and when lemur came out we thought wow it finally arrived but you know it was expensive and um, a little clunky but when you know when apple put their weight behind the concept of touch a touch screen computer interface that's really opened the doors and um, that made it possible. Uh, certainly alongside all this digital signal processing, but it was really the, the iPad and then also the whole kind of client server software revolution that we've, you know, we've been using for years, but is it, we leverage it here so that you can have multiple iPads running at once. You could have one at stage and one at the front of house and so forth. So, um, Oops. I just switched back to you because I think we're done with the presentation. Yes. I would like uh, to show people who gave them all this uh, nice information over the last hour. We've been talking for an hour now so far. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, um, I'd like to, yeah, thanks for having me. I just got a couple of places you can go for more information. Um, and I will, I'll share my screen just so you can see the, The links here, and then I'll turn I, it off. But, I already uh, added hmm? the links into the text of the oh. YouTube video, so viewers can Even better. Okay, great. Yeah. So, uh, great. I, I, well, thanks for having me. Thanks for giving us all those uh, detailed information, Steve. Um, maybe one last apple to people. If you have any questions now, I will take a look to Facebook, which I don't look at all the time because I prefer the YouTube chat. No, I think. This can only mean that we gave them all the information. Well, what, what came to my mind just right now was uh, the, the importance of, of, the, of signal protocols. Like you're, you're relying a lot on, on AVB. And with those, mm -hmm. without those protocols uh, linking together uh, different techniques from different manufacturers, all of this wouldn't have been possible in, in, in that way, I think. That's correct. And also, even just with our own products, um, 
AVB is what lets us take two small uh, galaxy matrices and build one larger one. Because you don't have, as a user, you don't have to worry about how it's done, but we're using AVB to transport the audio between the, the modules so that when you have an input into one module, it gets shared with the other ones. And that's, uh, and certainly, and OSC. So OSC and AVB are, are key. And even, even on the tracking side, RTT, RPM, Black Tracks is probably the preeminent company behind it, but there are others that support this protocol for tracking systems, which is uh, another, you know, another way that we were able to leverage technology that was really developed initially for lighting you know, and, and motion capture. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe one last final question. When you look five or some years ahead in the future, can you give us a glimpse of what you could imagine, if, even if it's very fantastic at the moment, what could be the next project? Well, I, I just think uh, certainly, you know, we're now, this product is, is, uh, has a maximum of 32 ch input channels. I could see that expanding in the future and being able to control more channels. Um, we also have a product um, called Constellation, which is an active acoustic system. Those products go hand in hand, Space Map and Constellation. And um, we've done a number of projects already where they're an active acoustic system, which when you press a button, you change the room acoustics, right? That requires a lot of loudspeakers and microphones in the room to pick up the ambient acoustic, regenerate it and expand the room. So I think I can see more integration between you know room control systems and spatial uh spatial audio systems like space map and constellation okay yeah so let's be curious what will come up next from the creative minds of Maya sound steve thank you very much this was uh, steve allison Director of Spatial Sound uh, at Maya Sound, who gave us a deep insight into the new SpaceMap Go system from Maya Sound. If you have any questions, you can still write them in the comments. I will forward them to Steve, or you go directly to the Maya Sound site on mayasound.com. For now, if you like this little show, give me a link or an abo. And I say thank you now. Have a nice evening and see you next time. Goodbye. Cheers.